said, I'm tired. Fire here tonight. I see get the time is too. Ain't God good? That's a great job. And you know what? The Lord showed me back that well, when they give us preachers in the 60s, early 60s, we cancel our social security in that space. That, that the VFA wouldn't be no good. Did you know what's happening now? All people are talking about stuff is, is right now. You may not believe it. Everything right now, uh, you can never get another check. Everything keeps going down. This ain't Bush's fault. This ain't nobody's fault, but uh, but the people's fault. Right. And we're and I'm telling you, people have to trust God for us over. You can go ahead and do what you want to. But one of these days you're gonna put the God you have to your garden. I've been te- teaching people you know, in our gardens, canned food, don't live out of the store. Did you know right now that that back then when gas was 18 cents a gallon more than 40 years ago, the Lord told me gas is going to go to four or five bucks a gallon. Did you know it reached that? So you know you heard that out of back then when you buying it cheap. Right. And sure we beat gas home. I want you to buy these cars to get better gas money, but you want them, you want to keep up with a, whatever who you was. You used to say the Joneses, but there's many of them now that they get mad. Then I used to say to keep up with the Brown. Now I buy these Brown to keep up with the Johnson. I tell you, I just try to keep up with Jesus. The world's coming to an end. It ain't going to end in a high note. It's going to end in tribulation. I mean, you need, you need a, a, a whole Bible, a whole thing. They need to go in there and talk to these guys about peace because the Bible said they'll say it, they ain't going to be none. He said they'll talk about peace, but to be what? Shut nuclear destruction. That's what he's talking about. Because one of his prophets said the people's eyeball are met in the hole. Flesh, that's what nuclear bomb does to people. Your eyeballs met in your hole while you're still alive. So the Bible teaches us all this. See, I, I believe that. Now, I don't read these other things. I read one translation. That's an authorized King James Version. That's what I got saved. That's what the preacher preached out of it. Got me saved. If it's good enough to save me when I was headed to Nashville when I was a kid, I finally got to go to Nashville. I thought I was going on the Grand Ole Opry when I was a kid, but later I went there with the largest tent in the world with a Grand Ole Gospel. You know what? Marty Roberts and all of them. Praise God. They met me there for us. Thank God. Hallelujah. The Lester Plant and all of them. Man, they wanted me on their shows to sing some of these good old songs on the Holy Ghost. But you know, I said, no, I won't do God that way. I wouldn't be caught up there. I wouldn't mind saying them because I wouldn't do nothing but going there and saying about Jesus and me. But I wouldn't want the people out trying to the, the chief in his tents to think that I've had that stuff. But I believe us preachers need to be without reproach. I don't believe in uh, when I'm trying to run around with Hollywood because you think, well, he just wanted me. I want to run around with holy people. Holy good people. Don't you want holy good people? Hallelujah. How many want to be holy as he told us? Glory. I said, glory. Thank you, Jesus. I said, praise God. But I was, we're finishing saying major calamity. And I'm not talking about anything of that part. If it happens, it's already been spoken. Right now, they say, if we don't get something done, it's going to be worse than the Great Depression. Y'all been hearing me preach. Probably side back down and saw peas and pull this thing ever got here when when the stock market was six and seven and eight hundred up, when Carter and Reagan, I saw that thing got so big, got to fifteen thousand. Then I saw that big old bubble. You know, man, they said this thing, the bubble's busting. Y'all hear that? That's what they said. Bare words that God told me back under uh, years and years ago about this bubble. It's busting now. And we need God. Do you know what? 
Let's all sit down and hope you'll get back to church. Now, I'm not talking about that bunch that y'all gonna preach, man. You can't get nothing in one hour of church. You do go over and get you something. You have a church. Man, they used to have church all night. Well, we need to get back to the Holy Roller Day. I said, we need to get back to the Holy Roller Day. Thank you, Jesus. But I was coming around, I had I went, I jogged again today, and I used to jog at night, but I jogged in, because I jogged it. We'll be traveling tomorrow, about 12 hours, and then when I get to where I'm going, I'll probably jog and do the rest, and Sunday night we'll be traveling, being green or south, and I'll be up there about 50 miles of where this mess is. They let me, I'll come over and pray and see if we can help get it straight down. Lay your hands on all of them. the devil out on them. Let, let him go. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I don't want to think about these. You know what I was praying in? I said, God, send judgment on these folks that killing these unborn babies. Somebody asked me, said, do you believe in a woman's right? I said, yes, I do. But I don't believe it's, it's, it's nobody's right to kill a baby. Well, you believe it or not. I don't believe you have nobody got a right to kill a baby. And I don't believe a man's got a right to, to, to lie with another man. The Bible says if a man lies with another man, it's a bummination. And if a woman lies with another woman, that's a bummination. And then John jumped over up there and he was the one that seen that the final end of this thing when we were all going to stand up yonder. He said, all them women that defile themselves with the woman and all them men that defile themselves with the man is going to be cast. Not dead. Not dead. But alive. Into what? A lake of fire. How long burning? How long? How many years? Forever? Then how much more? Forever? Then how much more? Forever again. Zero. Don't know where it started, don't know where it ends. Hallelujah. And if I don't stand up here and preach this word and warn you of all that stuff, then I'm going to give an account of it. But if I do, my, the blood's going to be off of me and you don't hearken to the word, you don't hearken to God, the blood's going to be on you. Amen. And I'm going to get, I'm going to, God's going to pass me. But if I don't, He won't pass me. I want to pass at that judgment, don't you? But I was coming right back when I was thinking while I was running about all this stuff. I mean, it stayed on my mind then. I got the word there. I'm possessed with it. Some of y'all are possessed with the devil, but I'm possessed with the world. I'm possessed with the word. You know, I, I mean, I, the word God spoke so hard. I tell you, we had hundreds of people say, didn't we? Man, they bawled. Man, I thought, Lord, I want to stay out there among the Indians. I'd go out there and something I might jump up. Oh! Yeah. Praise God. I do. And they laughed and we shout together and we Thank God. Hallelujah. Glory. They hunger for God. The Bible said the poor have the gospel. Ain't many people in America do much got the gospel. But the poor. And I was coming around, you know, the Lord told me before I got here. We felt to go to our church in Ashland Saturday, and I felt to go to uh, Memphis, Sister Sauce, and Brother Banks, and all Sunday morning. That was a great service. But the Lord spoke. You ought to hear the word that come forth. And I tell you, it was shaking. Shaking. I prayed so hard. Saturday night, judgment of uh, women ripping the hymns out of the dress because it's too short. <laughs> I'm not trying to have a sex party. I don't care. I won't preach modesty if you don't like it. But I'm going to pass you through this world once. That, you know, they say all over the world, uh, because of the, me taking a stand like I have for these 50 years, holding the 
Church that's still alive. I looked at him and said, why do you just touch on the holiness of us? I said, well, you give him action if you want it. Without it, no man should see the Lord. And I'm just trying to get you to see the Lord. Amen. If I can get you to get whole hog for God's to say all and follow Him, deny yourself, put on the whole arm of God, be ye holy as He's holy, lay aside every weight and every sin that's got you all bogged down, Amen. then me and you both will see the Lord. Somebody asked me, said, don't you think I'd get to heaven without holiness? I said, no, I ain't got it. But if you did, you'd be blind as a man. Because you said, without it, no man should see the Lord. Who wants to go to heaven and run around blind? Not me. I want to see who died on the cross. For me. It's going to take holiness to get to heaven. I don't want to be saved as my fire. Let us do danger. I don't believe in his deathbed repentance much. I believe a lot of people dying. I remember a man died up there. I went into a uh, toilet and come out and I saw a man over in another stool over there and he was dying. And then he slumped over and died. And I went out there and Saw an officer call him, told him to call 911. Started when God told me the fire come all over me. There's another guy standing there. Fire come all over me. And I said, Lord, because and I went back and the guy was dead. And I put my arms around him. I don't know who he was. I put my arms around him like that guy over his head, and I saw him burning in hell. And I said, big man. I saw him playing under the collar. I said, big man right now, if your spirit, or the spirit of the dead, can hear. I said, big man, if you hear me, if right now, if you're called on the name of Jesus, God will save your soul. Have a cry to God. And I began to cry. I said, Lord, bring His spirit back in Him. So where He can, can be saved for this and receive Christ. But that time the paramedics and ambulance got there, that guy started slanging me away, you know, and praying. I was praying. I wasn't too up. I didn't pray for two or three minutes. Some that big old guy standing there. I don't know who he was. He, he stood up there and he said, You let him alone till he finishes. I'm talking about that point. A lot of times you just want to go on and mind your business, but that's what I was going to do mind the business, you know. But God said, you get back up for fire come all over you. And I'm going to do what God said before. I'm going to stand for you. And that finally got through. And they loaded him up, doing all that stuff. Said so he's dead. Cut him up, put him on that thing, put him in that ambulance. Well, they got 15 minutes. That man was alive. And they got him on the hospital. That other guy, big old guy, he, I asked him where he was laying up there. I asked him, I he said, he said, well, I hope you're around. He was a cabinet. He said, I hope you're around when I die. And you give me my rights. <laughs> That's what he said. But I hope you're around when I die. And you give me my rights. He's what he thought I was doing, you know. Because he thought I was a priest. Sometimes people see me like this, they think I'm a priest. You mean my life, right? And so I never did hear. I don't know what happened. But about six months after that, I was walking across a little square thing. And I, I saw this big old man had a Bible on his own. Then he come around the door and he's grabbing me and picking me up in the air. Like that. He said, thank God for you. Being there. He said, I died. I was in hell. He said, you don't know I was a backslidden holiness person. Been running for God for seven years. Turn my back on God. And when you said, my feet was already in the flames of hell. And you said, big man. 
Fall on down and say, God start bringing me out of hell. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Glory. God don't just save in church. God don't just heal in church. Jesus went in villages and healed. He went about uh, down the streets and healed. He healed them on the highway. He stopped on the trees and looked up and saw people in trees. Said, come home. Come down. Today, salvation come to your house. Hallelujah. I mean, he, 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 Jesus is Jesus. Amen. I was saying the whole thing, a revival broke out in India. We had over 500 cripples come to the whole thing with Jesus in five days. Sister, I think it's time to be in these places. And you know, uh, we have to climb down the fire state so we're going to leave on the life service in the field. Honest God, we said, three or four, you ought to bless that little heart. I said, don't look down on this. Midnight we call it going to the next city. But God is real. He's a deliverer. Amen. I said he's a deliverer. Amen. God is Jesus didn't just have Sunday school. Man, he he went about doing good. Healing the sick. Cast out devils. But I know we can't cast out devils. I'm about to cast everybody out. I mean, <laughs> hallelujah. Hey, God. We got all these spirits. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Well, no. It's the truth. It's time for Jesus to be get back on Main Street. Get back on Broadway. Hallelujah. It's time for us to get back on Street called Straight. God knows. Uh, oh, Adam, I said there's a man over yonder on the street called Straight. Been killing my people. But I knocked him off his house. Said he needs somebody to help him. And the, and the man said, look, look, God, I heard about him. That, that he killed your people. He persecuted them. And, but God told Adam, I said, you get on down there. Said he's praying now. Said I'm, I, I've got him where he's praying. God said if we'll get back to praying, I don't care what you've done. God will save you. He'll deliver you. Hallelujah. 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 That man done so bad. Persecuted and killed and whipped and stoned. But God changed his name. You know, sometimes you might have changed your name if you've been so bad. God changed his name because he got so bad. Didn't he? You ever read that? Amen. One, one, one day his name was Saul and after God saved him and got him on the right track, God changed his name to Paul. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory. I said glory. glory. Man, if you've been so bad, change your name and get back get on in the ministry. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I said thank you, Jesus. Amen. He went right back for he uh, saved Aaron and did all that bad stuff. Now he's having revival. Now he's building churches. Now he's an overseer. Now he's a leader. Now the Holy Ghost has made him an overseer over the church of God. Hallelujah. And he's one of the main leaders of all the Word of God. Well, I'm just barking tonight like a barking dog. Neither. didn't mean to sell that, but I, I mean, some people have to post. And it is how many have. They may get it solved, they may not get it solved. Either way, they ain't going to last. You say, why? I'm going to keep hammering. I'm trying to hammer, I ain't stopping. I, I know prosperity ain't going to help folks. I know as long as folks that they got beer, uh, they buy beer and cigarettes, they ain't going to see God. Jesus. You ain't going to see God. God's going to have to bring you down to nothing. When, when, when one puts in hell, the other's on a banana peeling about making the banana peeling. Back when I was born, it was nanners. How many of you ever remember when they said nanners? You know what a nanner is? Yeah. <laughs> well, I came from the back 
Lord. This church told me that bless her, she don't. I mean, boy, she's a high pollutant. You know. But she said, y'all been around you so much, said, my, I got to get brushed up on my knees. <laughs> you can work my knees. She said, I got to go back to school. Said, I don't really know good grandma. <laughs> Hallelujah. Took on your way. Hallelujah. Right, God's good. And she been brushing up on her knees. Oh, she talked like a professional when I married her. But just hanging around this nuts. Hallelujah. God's good. But like Moses, you know, he couldn't talk very good, didn't have a good good speech, but Aaron run around sort of hepping him out. And they got the job done, didn't they? They had the biggest church ever was. They say that Houston guy got a big job all right now. They ain't got nothing down there now. I've been prophesied against that fellow. Boy, I tell you, they've been, I, I, I decreed, I didn't prophesy that storm, I decreed it before a multitude of people not too long ago. You prophesied on the table, right? And, uh, to hit Galveston and Houston. And I want God to hit that place, and He did. And they still ain't got flags. They still in the names. Robert Island has been nothing but a whorehouse. In a place where people go and take people's wives out there. And now there ain't no dolphin out in much. Ain't no people don't know where the streets are. God blow the streets. They don't know where they at no more. Jesus. Bill has been up there for a hundred years, ain't there no more. He's good enough, and then that's just the beginning. God said these whirlwinds is coming on the weekend. Memphis is going to that, uh, it's going to happen. Just like Paul, when I left Memphis, I told him last, what was it, I made? I said, I'm going to take this staff. I took this staff. I said, I'm going to take this staff. And I, get a, I ain't going to do it on this side of the river, I said. I'm going to go, he's going west. And I get over on the other side of this, I'm going to stop at the nearest truck stop, and I'm going to lift this thing. And I'm going to decree and speak to the Mississippi River, and it's going to be worse floods and destruction in 500 years. I, some of y'all might have been in Memphis and I told them that. Man. He was leading his hand. Wait. He said, why would you say so? God wanted me to say it. And it ain't two weeks that it happened. And there was a drought on everywhere. All this whole country is in the drought. I don't care about the drought. Some people work and say, rain, it's going to rain. They probably thought it's going to rain. Well, you don't probably thought it's going to rain when it's raining. Hallelujah. That's what's wrong with these guys. That they see it happening and then they start prophesying. I was there. He started prophesying the birth of Christ. 700 years before it happened. And I believe it. When I leave here, I'm going to speak again. I was down in Maple. First ten days of May. Know about that? And on Mother's Day, the night day before Mother's Day, as I've been to make a lot of time. Don't tell you on something. I said this time. I said when I leave, I'm taking this stand. I had an evening service, three o'clock. I said I'm going to hold this stand over Macon. And I said the wrath of God is going to hit here. My tracks ain't going to get cold. I don't care if you believe a word I'm saying. And a brother Mike there, my driver couldn't drive because he had to drive something else on up to the climate is where he moved to. So a brother Mac there, the little black brother played with the left of the hand with his guitar. Travel with us here, but he's right preaching now. And his wife was following us. We went. And I spoke that word with and you know, I was gone seven hours. That all these songs that make a disorder, 30,000 homes, and just pull that place up. And they didn't get the tent down. The thing pulled up trees on the other side of the tent, jumped over the tent, went over where the bathrooms was, picked them up and set them out there four or five hundred feet. Just the bathroom, like the guy said, and tore it, set them out there and didn't even, and didn't even touch the tent. God pulled that place up. He said, why? Because God backs up. This is time. 
Judgment is coming to the houses of God. Amen. It don't make no difference. You believe nothing. I don't care what you think of me or what you don't think of me. If you help me, I need your help. But if you don't, I'm still going to get out there and make it. Somebody said, why? I said, well, if you don't put me on an airplane, I'm going to believe God's going to give me a plane to wire around. That's right. I saw before Jesus come, people that had a plane of wire around. And I believe it. It happened to me once. And it might have happened to me twice. It happened to me once. The Lord picked me up over a thousand miles and sent me to a phone booth. And I thought I was in a vision. Wow. There was a backslidden ended preacher the right there in the Patchett Reservation. I'd make phone calls up, uh, 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 earlier. Two or three years earlier, maybe a year before that. And I stood there and I laid hands on that backslidden any preacher was drunk, commanded the devil to come out of him, got saved. I thought it was in the vision. Next thing I was back to the world. I was praying. But Christmas, when we had that our meeting at Baines where we get every, every year, I saw that meeting. I didn't come in that door to the church which holds about 15 or 2,000. And it was me on the Christmas and all the drugs do that. He comes in and had a big old Bible just like this. Come walking in there and come by the front and he didn't mean stop. I was already had to pull this. Walk right down and walk up and say, Remember me? Preacher looking fellow. I said, You the man at the phone booth and I turned and patch a reservation in Arizona. He said, Yes, sir. Said I was saying if we can make a call, you came and laid hands on me and delivered me. So that means I was there. And I thought I was in a vision, but I was there, and the only way I could got there, and back where I was, over a thousand miles, it had to be the Holy Ghost keeping me on the center of that. Amen. And in the days of Elijah, they knew it. And they have. They said, Elijah drove me on a mountain. We got it surrounded. And they have said, yeah, I know what's going to happen if we get up there and he'd be over on another mountain. <laughs> uh, that wasn't the first time Elijah uh, was caught up in a whirlwind. He had a ministry jumping from one mountain to another. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go. I mean, he went to heaven alive. Yes. Bible said the, the end was caught up. Well, some of us going to be a was not. And the end was a was not. He was and he was not. <laughs> so I make him a was not. Call it into heaven. Philip, preaching to the Ethiopian on this side of Jerusalem, it was 300 miles over to the desert where he went and up, where he was. And the Bible said, I come up out of the water, baptized the guy in the name of the Lord Jesus. When he come up out of the water, the Spirit called Philip up and was carried over and 300 miles. It took him a year to get over a foot. Over 325 miles that he was caught up preaching over in the desert in the villages. And you say, God ain't the same Jesus. I saw this back in the floor and all that. Back under in 59 and 60, 62 and 1 and 62, when I saw the last day revival, it's going to be a revival. God's going to transport people. So when He changed, Amen. When you ain't never seen nothing change, you don't believe that God is the same. To me, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I am the Lord, and I change not. Get your mind out of that rut. And start believing in the supernatural. Amen. God spoke the earth into existence. Amen. Jesus turned the water to wine. He ain't changed. Amen. Had that great revival over in Indonesia. And the water was turned to wine. And some people said, I won't believe us. Well, then you don't believe Jesus. Then. They didn't have the money to buy, buy the great Jews. God turned the water to wine. Well, they have to be. You believe? Yeah, I believe. Yes, sir. Yes. So why? Because he done it there 
at, at, at a pagan wedding. If he turned water to wine at a pagan wedding, why wouldn't he turn wine, water to wine for folks, poor folks that ain't got no great juice or wine to have communion, turn water to wine for them? Let me tell you something. She's ain't changed because you have. Amen. Uh, Jesus ain't changed because you changed from the Word of God or something else. He's the same. He, he is everything His Word is and more. Everything His Word is and more. Thank you, Jesus. Look at that little bit of handful of bread in here. 5,000 guys, just men. And all of them had a wine. Some of them might have had more than one. Because in those days, they had more than one wine. Some of them was Mormons. Well, we forget that one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I thought I had more than one guy. In one guy. Bible said for us, women and children. Amen. Wives and children. Back those days, they didn't have children as they had her. By the way, Jackson, the doctor, told a friend of mine, he had to carry his wife a birth, that little operator, the doctor told him, 65 percent of the people born here in these hospitals in Jackson, born out of wedlock. I heard a report the other day that all over the country, that 70 percent of, of all these babies have been born and born until they ain't married. Ain't that a shame? Well, I'm, see, I'm stacking a lot of fire tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm down there with brother. Ain't preaching that little church about him. I don't see my place as preach. You know? Thank you, Jesus. 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 That's why the doors are open all over the world. Talked to Brother David today in Africa. They're paying for the people in Africa. They just can't wait. And that giant tent we're shipping a 350 something foot tent. The 12 foot sidewalls for people to, uh, to preach in Apple during the rainy season. And then the ship ride, we, we kept Brother Tony packing his tent up. And being in Afghanistan, they're going to load up the container and also the tractor and trailer, put it on the boat. The boat arrived in Africa the Senate. The, they said they clerk the customs. And I tell you, the Lord is going to help Africa. That's down in the south of Africa. We're not going up in the north yet. But maybe we're getting up people saved. Time to get up there and be saved. <laughs> and say it's safe up there right now. There's been up there. there. Man, they're key for, 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 for a nephew. I've been over there uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, Sudan. It's dangerous. But I want to go to Sudan. I want to go to Sudan Revival. But right now, and I heard a little bit of good news. That they're trying to just get them to back up, you know, with killing all these folks. And you get some United Nations on these folks. But them folks, they, they, uh, black, silly black people, you know, it's sad, ain't it? It's called they ain't Muslims. Let me tell you something, we need to quit killing one another because we ain't what they are. Don't you believe that? Man, them people, and the Christians have all moved down. Moved down. And they're trying to split that country into two different countries. Where and the Christians have moved out. They killed. I, I saw the other day when they killed two hundred thousand. But, the, but over there, they said it's more than that. Reason where they said it's over half a million. That was last year. Over half a million Christians killed. Don't that hurt your heart? Amen. This is called. We don't want to get involved in somebody. And then these kind of Americans don't want us to help our poor countries. And some of them running for president. They don't want to do that. But they need our help. I'm telling you something, folks. Everybody ought to have a chance to hear the gospel. Amen. This kind of gospel of Jesus. Amen. Praying for the sick gospel. Lifting up Jesus. By his stripes we are healed. By his blood we are saved. Everybody needs to hear that you can be filled with the Holy Ghost. And fire, if you repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, I'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost. 
of the promises to you and your children and to them that dwell in the honor somewhere. Yeah. It's for you. Yes. It's for your handmaids, your sons, your daughters. Yeah. In some way or another, God, he, He's going to do it. Something's going to happen. He, he's going to want God. They're going to find out all these other gods ain't happening. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing, you get one. When you call on one God, He don't help you. Then you find you call on Jesus, and He'll help you. You'll switch God's right quick. And I'm telling about people about Jesus, God. I tell them. One time, I was on there, we had about, what that, that particular night, we had about 1,500. First night, a Muslim lady come up, and she had a, a little baby, a little boy, with blind, white eyes, about six years old. This is white as this right here. And she laid him up there before my feet. I had a pill, bigger than this whole pill. And I got down there, I, I saw she was modeling, had that modeling thing on. I looked at her and then turned to heaven. I said, hey, have you ever called on Mohammed to heal this boy? She said, yeah. But what did you do? Nothing. I said, let's call on Jesus. I got in there and me and her got in there and me and her both called on Jesus. She repeated that prayer. I called on the name of Jesus. And that both, uh, God struck me dead right now, I can't tell you. Mohammed never done nothing. So he's been dead a long time. But Jesus has been alive since he died. He come back after three days. Live every morning. Can't kill him no more. Can't kill him no more. Ain't that something? Amen. He can go through a door. He can come through a wall. Hallelujah. He can hear and disappear. Time you cock your gun, he go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. And we got through that little boy's eyes as white as this. Peel off. And that little boy got up. And was healed. Oh, it's such a beautiful miracle. The next morning, that little Muslim lady, she got up and she went down. It was a rich town. Muslim got a lot of money. And she went down from 6 o'clock, her and that boy, all up and down, telling them people that Jesus had healed her boy. You believe this or not? God, take my breath right now. 3 o'clock in the evening, we started at 6. At 3 o'clock in the evening, that field was jammed. Whoa. From 1500 to the end of the month, the young, our lights, we had lights that covered 100,000. When, when they introduced me to the platform, we had the speakers all set up, with lots of speakers. Then people, when, when the man introduced me to the platform, and I walked to the platform, then people started running over one another, banging crippled babies, twisted bodies. Knocked the sound system over. The mic fell out. I mean, just water poured out. And everybody was, it was coming from every direction. I told the, some of the missionaries, everybody started praying for the sick. The interpreter ran. Because there was a mass running over one another. I couldn't, I, they couldn't understand me and I couldn't understand them. But laying hands upon Forty deaf dumb people just to heal the cripples, legs, twisted. I mean everything. Even though the missioner just visiting with me. Start laying hands on the sick. And another one of the missionaries that come from America. He's dead now, but he went over. He was alive, he could tell you. But he died last year. He prayed for about forty deaf dumb. I mean every kind of sickness, blind and all crutches. Braces, everything. And we, and we, we couldn't leave lay hands on everyone else. Just lay hands, time to touch, maybe see They didn't have one church in that area. Talk about the moms who wouldn't let them build churches. Now they, they just we, through our ministry, right after that we built 13 or 14 or 16 churches in that area. And now we're buying them. I went back to that city about five years later and the papers owned by 
the Muslims. Got a real nice hospital. Every night, I went back to Sister Caroline was married. They, and every night they were, after the service, again we had a giant crowd. Our pictures in the paper. Every night, the, 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 the doctors the, the spoke English. They called the hotel, wanted me to come to the hospital. I prayed for so many people to meet and then preached and, and ministered. And one night I was so good, I told the doctor, I said, look, doctor, the, doctor, I can't say that. I'm going to send him my driver, be right at the door and pick him. I said, I can't deny him. He said, I'll be there myself. I said, you be out front. I said, I got a man dying. If he dies, you're going to be responsible. That's what he said. I knew then I had to go. Went up there and God healed a dying man. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, I said, Hallelujah. Whether you believe it or not, the Muslim news reporter put our pictures on front page of miracles happening in the hospital. Miracles happening to meet him. Hallelujah. Revival. I think this is the only thing that will bring peace between the Muslims and other people of the world. If you can let, let them see there's a power, there's a name greater than Muhammad, there's a name greater than Allah. I said, Allah can't do nothing for you. I don't know who he is, but I know who Almighty God is. I know who Jesus is. Hallelujah. I said, I know Jesus is God. He's the Almighty. He said, when you see me, you see the Father. When you see the Father, you see me. When you call on my name, whatever you ask me for, I'll do it. I'll bring it to pass. I'll bring it to pass. Hallelujah. I said, we need a Jesus revival. We need to get back to the old path. We need to get back to denying ourselves, taking up Jesus' call. And when we do, we're going to find Jesus Christ going to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. Forever. I said forever. Uh, what Sister Orr said? She, she's over here. She said, come back there. We were in Africa, and her and her daughter, when she got there, just came here. She said, she was helping me in Africa. A woman come up with a big old boy. And it's all big as a grapefruit. Standing there. And I touched that garter and she fainted. It fell. It went in and she fainted. And the woman fainted. It disappeared just like that. And people started to tell me to remember her. Hallelujah. No. Not for Paul I touched it. Because I lifted up a man called Jesus and he touched it. He said, if I be lifted up, I said, if I be lifted up, I'll call all men to believe. How did Jesus say? I'll call all men to believe. The people ain't gonna believe in these dead religions. They believe in these dead religions and die. Believe in Jesus and live. Believe in these dead religions and to stay the old man. Believe in his Jesus and become a new man. Hallelujah. I said, when the blind believe in Jesus, they see. When the deaf believe in Jesus, they hear. When the lame believe in Jesus, they're made whole. Hallelujah. When you believe in Jesus, you'll be healed. He's the Lord that can heal you. So 